What is up, my better biscuits? Y'all, I got three videos posted today. Like, Loki, who am I? Because if y'all know me, I barely post like three videos in a week. But I literally am posting three today because I did want to talk about the Trisha Paytas, Ethan Klein situation because you guys know that I really do like frenemies and I selfishly wish that it could work out even though I know it is such a like low-key toxic duo. But I still just love it. I don't know. I have said it time and time again. I feel like it's like my guilty pleasure. And I really do like their energy, their chemistry. I do feel like they are so different that it makes for a really good podcast concept. Well, I'm sure you guys already know about the drama. If not, I made videos about it here on my channel. They broke up. They stopped the podcast. And now Ethan Klein had turned it into families, which I guess a lot of people like that concept too. However, I just really liked the chemistry between Ethan and Trisha. Well, if you guys have not seen, actually, she did post a apology video towards Ethan Klein, but I guess it wasn't received very well because I will show you guys a screenshot within this video, the likes to dislikes ratio, as well as Ethan Klein talking about it. He did make a TikTok and I will be posting that within this video so you guys can see it for context. And I will be posting a small, small clip from um, Trisha Paytas' apology video. And I'm just kind of like, oh, like I low-key was kind of hoping that like, okay, you know what? As soon as I saw the title of it, I was like, oh my gosh, things are going to work out. Like maybe she talked to him privately. And I thought that maybe the podcast would be coming back. And I guess, I am just wishful thinking over here because it doesn't really look like it. Although I was really hoping that it would make a comeback. And honestly, y'all, I feel like it was beneficial for them both. So I kind of felt like Ethan would be receptive towards the apology. However, it's not looking that way. Um, but I was thinking that he would be because obviously ever since Trisha came on his channel, it kind of like revived his channel and he's getting millions and millions of views. And especially the Frenemies podcast was the most watched podcast on his channel. So I really felt like he would make it work. Although I guess maybe this situation just caused way too much drama within his family and he said hey you know what it's better for me to just let this go even though it is beneficial for my career and it's beneficial for my wallet maybe it's better for him and his family and his relationship with Ela and his brother-in-law Moses to just let it go um I just wish that it would make a comeback. But anyways, y'all, we'll go ahead and talk about it within this video. So if you guys are interested in that, of course, go ahead and keep on watching. If y'all are new here, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. Turn on your post notifications so that way you'll get notified when I upload a new video. Make sure I'll give this video a big thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. Make sure you guys follow me over on Instagram and TikTok. They're both skeleton as well, too. So let's go ahead and get into today's video. All right, y'all. So this video was actually posted three days ago. I am a little bit late to this. However, I was waiting for Ethan Klein to respond. And I was kind of hoping that they would make some type of announcement that Frenemies was going to be coming back at least just for like one episode to say bye and sell their merch because obviously the Frenemies merch has already been in production for quite some time now so what are they going to do with that merch I kind of thought they would you know at least come back for one episode so I was waiting a little bit to see if something else would transpire from this but Ethan actually just responded yesterday and it doesn't seem like he received this apology too well and I really don't blame him I will explain myself within this video and this is probably why she posted this video and it says apology to Ethan however it does have 11 ads posted in it which I do find kind of tacky because why do you need to be monetizing an apology video if it's an apology I feel like it should be heartfelt and you shouldn't be making money from it you get what I'm saying I just don't feel like it's very appropriate you know I feel like it comes across as in like oh snap I gotta make money and maybe she really does maybe she realizes now without frenemies she's losing a lot of money and maybe she has to compensate for the money she's losing and put ads on this video because obviously she knows it's going to get a lot of views being that it is addressing Ethan another thing that I just do want to say right off the bat is I do find it a little bit weird considering that they're literally about to be family considering she is marrying Ethan's brother-in-law don't you guys find it a little bit weird that she's posting an apology video without like thoroughly talking to him first? Because I could totally understand if she does make an apology video to the public considering obviously they're public figures. They did have a frenemies podcast together. They obviously are very, very public. However, it does seem a little bit weird that she's posting this when clearly it seems from Ethan's point of view that they didn't really even talk about it. And then on top of that too, he was upset about it being monetized, which I don't blame him. I do find that a little bit tacky myself, but it's like, I'm trying to be understanding and be like, okay, well she does have a wedding coming up and she probably is losing a lot of money right now, but low key it is kind of tacky. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, um, she posted this and I didn't want to talk about the likes to dislikes ratio. She has 33,000 dislikes on this and 22,000 and likes on this so clearly people are not receiving this very well and maybe the monetization has something to do with it or maybe it's the fact that maybe it's a little bit too late you know but i'm gonna go ahead and play this small clip right here from her video so you can check it out for yourself we talked we talked really quick like he's like are you done to film tomorrow i was like yes like i wanted it to be over because i do get in the moment and it's, it's it's not anyone's problem but my own and it is something that i really need to work on um i'm not gonna take away the fact that i, I really do think i've made improvements but 
end of the day, like I, I, I messed up and I sabotaged another good thing in my life and I messed up and yeah, there's only so much back and forth forgiveness, comeback that you can do in any situation. This is, it's almost like a relationship situation, right? Where I quit before and then take me back and you know, it's kind of that sort of thing. Um, and there is only so much back and forth you can do. And sometimes the final straw is not as significant as other fights. And in me, I had to process like, well, this wasn't that significant. Why was this the ending I quit before? You know, so I had to really process. So that you guys can see, I do think it's good that she's being a little bit more self-aware within this specific situation. I have said, and I've said it multiple times in multiple videos, I do totally understand her when she does say that she wants to take a little bit of control underneath the production of Frenemies. I totally understand that being that she is a co-host on there. The 5% of production is coming out of that. And then also keep in mind too, 100% of the highlights is going towards um, Ethan and the um, whole H3 podcast crew. So I do understand her on that. However, I do feel like this thing was just so blown out of proportion. And y'all know how Trisha is. Sometimes she just really just overreacts. And I do think that it really, really sucks. I think out of all the times, this is the one that has made me the most sad. And this is me 100% just being selfish because I really, really looked forward to Frenemies every single week. And I was getting so excited that they were doing Frenemies vlogs now. So I was like, oh my gosh, like I love this so much. And you know what's so crazy is how big Frenemies became and how many people actually ended up coming out and saying that they love Frenemies. And if you guys check back on my videos when Frenemies was first coming around, I was like, I really like it. And I, I was kind of like uh, apprehensive to say that I really liked it because... I feel like so many people just don't like Trisha Paytas, and I totally understand for very valid reasons. However, I was really a fan from the of the podcast. Like immediately, I just felt like it was very entertaining and a really strange combo that made like such good energy for a podcast. You know what I'm saying? So that's why everyone's saying that. Look, they're looking towards like Whitney Cummings, I guess, to like become a co-host or like somebody else. And look, I totally do understand the whole frenemies concept for a podcast is a very good podcast, meaning that you kind of like agree with somebody disagree with somebody you kind of like somebody kind of don't like them you kind of consider them a friend but then you kind of consider them an enemy i feel like it's a really really good concept for a podcast however i just felt like with trisha and ethan it just was like perfect as it was so i will low-key be a little bit bitter if they do replace trisha with somebody else but i totally do understand because the concept is amazing nonetheless so um i went and saw this tiktok from ethan so i'm gonna go ahead and play this tiktok right here because it pretty much sums up his podcast from yesterday in a short period of time so go ahead and check this out it's not that i don't accept her apology it's that i don't want to i don't want to like gloss over i just i don't want to gloss over too much what went down. I mean, it's a lot for me to forgive this fast because this is a person who I considered, you know, family, a close friend, someone I trusted, someone that we were working together with, that I had a, a very close relationship, someone who I was confiding in. And, you know, as much as I understand that she has like conditions that make, you know, processing emotions hard for her, um, this is somebody who I perceived as dude she she honestly without mincing words was trying to like ruin my life to she was saying everything she could to attack me personally to attack the business i mean she was like liking tweets that were saying i was a racist so as you guys can see from right there he is a little bit on the fence of accepting this apology i do feel like he will come around and eventually accept it however from the looks of it it really seems like trisha did more than what I personally had seen. Like, I, yes, I did see her just kind of go on a tangent and go on a Twitter, like, rant nonstop, literally for probably, like, three days in a row of just tweet after tweet after tweet after tweet. I just really wish that I was, like, friends with Trisha so I can just tell her, stop. Like, put your phone away. Stop. Learn how to process your emotions. Think about things before you do it because she does come across as very, very impulsive. And in that moment, she just does not know how to stop. And I think that made everything worse. I did not know about these tweets that she was liking about Ethan. And it just really did seem like she was hitting below the belt. And I think that that really does suck. Um, even if she does obviously realize what she does or what she did wrong now, maybe it's a little bit too late. I don't know. But I just kind of feel like Ethan will eventually come around. I don't know if Frenemies will come back. What do you guys think about that? I know me personally, I really do want it to come back. However, I did want to go ahead and read this right here because she did um, do some tweets and deletes from Deaf Noodles. Um, so she quote tweeted this and said, I respect and am fine with him not accepting my apology and everything he had to say, but bringing another family into it who ask not to be brought up is not fair and and this is this part is 100% untrue. This is another thing that I just want to go to mention right here is like how come she just like could not stop. You know what I'm saying? Like 
She has his number. She could talk to him personally, like just stop the whole public thing. And everyone was like screaming at her, even myself. I was like, turn off the Wi-Fi, let it go, you know, and she just could not. But she posted another conversation right here um, with them on WhatsApp. So go ahead and check this one out right here. Um, she said, I stand by my apology and I respect his feelings and where he's at. I just would like to clarify, I did personally apologize before the video came out. I crossed out everything to respect his privacy, but felt it was important to show the day at the top when I said sent it so she was basically showing monday 4 32 whatever or i'm sorry 5 53 and she said i actually made an apology video to you but i wanted to say it to you just not sure where we stand i'm sorry for breaking your trust by screenshotting our conversations i'm also sorry i couldn't communicate to you properly i feel awful i always do but this i truly feel terrible i have a clickbait thing coming out tomorrow and then i wanted to post the apology wednesday which i don't see any other responses after that so i would like to kind of know like what ethan said to her privately but she obviously did post the video and then he did comment about it it within his podcast too and then she said i just want to say my issues were with ethan any family members of his that want to be public are allowed to say whatever their feelings are about me that's fine but for those who have asked to remain private and not be mentioned i wish he would respect that deleted the tweets i do want all this to be over and i won't make any more responses on any platform regarding the situation i do kind of hope that it is true because she obviously says that but then she goes and she mentions things that ethan doesn't want mentioned as well too so it's just like really really weird it's like she wants him to do this but then she goes and does it and then she wants it to stop but she keeps it going you know what i'm saying so it gets very very difficult and i just wish the whole situation would end i'm being very selfish here i'm just admitting it i wish the whole thing would end that way frenemies could come back and i just wish that they could have that friendship and it's so crazy to me because like as an outsider watching the podcast i was looking at it and i was like oh my god they're like really starting to become really good friends and then bam it just ends like that which i think really really sucks but anyways y'all you guys let me know your thoughts and opinions on everything and i'll catch you guys in my next video peace out girl scout